Hey guys, it's Andrew here from Metbury Miniatures. In this fifth part of this series of sculpting our first 28mm miniature, we're going to cover the posing of the model. So what I've gone and done is taken the assets that we've made in videos 1 through 4, and I put all of the gambeson, the belts, and stuff like that into a um, its own folder called cloths, or we meant to say clothes. So we're going to hide those because they're not going to be relevant when we start to pose. We're going to add those later. So, and what I've also done is merged all the parts of the legs together because there's no point um, posing the, like the leg and then adding the shoes and stuff later. We may as well do all of that in one go. But what I haven't done actually is I need to go in and hide some of these legs just where it's showing through. Uh, let's do that on this one as well. You could also do this with the um, pants that are, are at the top, but I'm going to leave those because sometimes we'll have um, straight pants. We're also going to add a skirt down the line. Um, so this is all under the base mesh. We're going to join these together um, once we put them in a position. So uh, lastly, hands. Let's see where we've put the hands. Okay, cool. The hands are part um, of the arm, but they're also a different poly group, which is going to be all right. So we want to set the pivot point for, with the gizmo for the axis up back to where the, sort of where the um, hand is. The shield, I believe, is probably in the center already. And the head, we want the head's pivot point to be at the bottom of the neck. And let's just turn it to the neck because when the head turns to the side, it's not quite as extreme as that, but it's not, it's not as simple as just um, like sp uh, spitting it upright because our neck isn't straight up. So, okay, so this is where we're going to start. Um, the clothes are all hidden. So I kind of want him to be um, running forward with the right leg forward, the shield up, and the axe kind of swinging up above his head. So one of the tricks I find for posing miniatures is start with the hips, place the hips in where they're going to go for how they're running. What um, If you look at uh, even a bunch of my early models where um, the hips and shoulders are square, maybe the torso is twisted, but they're still only like square. And that kind of just makes it look awkward. Things like having the toes uh, pointing in the same direction look awkward. And um, another um, thing is the shoulder line. Almost never is our shoulder line in a dead straight line. It's always one shoulder's forward, up, down, and things like that. It's some of these things like which hip is up, which hip is down, that make a model stand apart from something that's posed a little bit more simply. And it helps it make it look more dynamic and more realistic. So I know that this I want this right leg to come forward, so I'm going to spin this model. But when I um, spin with the hips, I'm actually going to just turn everything else back on um, I'm going to unselect the base as well and then select. So what I actually, let's just talk about it quickly for what I've done is so when I use the gizmo, um, it, it's got this button here, which is transpose all selected subtools. So if I click on one, it's going to unselect it. But if I click outside, it's going to alternate the selection. If I drag, it's going to select all or unselect all. I want to select all except for the base. So I'm going to um, twist it this way. And I want this right hip to be a little bit higher than the other one. So I'm just going to come this way and lift it up. But we're going to pull the torso further down and we're going to twist the torso around later. But we want this left leg to come back. So that's kind of, kind of where we want the hips to be. So this is just so that the belt and the torso are red, have moved. And now when they twist, um, they're in the right spot. So let's get rid of those. And now I'll come back to the torso. I'm going to hide the, um, um, sorry, this these parts here. I'm just going to start with this leg here now. So now we've kind of got the hips twisted. I would normally do it a little bit more extreme than that. So let's find where we reckon this hip joint is there with the gizmo tool and move it. And we're going to twist it forward. I might move it a bit more this way. And we're going to reach forward because he's, he's um, running or at least lunging. All right, so now it comes to moving um, the joints where it's all in one piece. So 
this works if we had made the pants part of this mesh, but I just haven't for, for this model. So then I'll, I'll mask off the limb that's going to stay still, leaving the knee. So you can mask from the foot up and then click to invert the mesh. Now let's get this gizmo down to the joint. And then we're going to twist it in like this and just sort of position it. Um, it's looking a little bit funny, so we're going to bring it out like that. And then this one, we're going to do the same thing, bring it up at the top, twist it a little bit, mask the top, bring it down and reach it back. So now, actually let's not do that until we put this gizmo here. It's, you can do it if the gizmo is like well and truly far behind, because it's like um, rotating on based on where the camera is, that's fine. But it just when we want to start twisting it left and right, it's just better if it's um, as close to the center as possible. So this is kind of fine for now. I've got one hip sort of dropped and it's going to make it be more clear when we start twisting the torso. Um, same thing again with the foot. So when you mask, it's got a quite a, a sort of a sharp line. I've got these tools here for you, sharpen mask and blur mask. So if you're finding when it's uh, masking, it's pulling and it's too sharp. So like it would be on this foot if we use that. Come in here, just go to blur mask. But the foot's quite high res. Um, what also works is turning down the intensity of the masking. And, but I would sort of leave that up and blur it instead. So just with this gizmo, let's just twist it up a little bit up. And then I was going to do the rest with the move brush, actually. Some of these things I would just do with the move brush, just because it's say it's quicker. But um, that's just preference. I'm going to move this base up as well now. All right, so let's load back all of the clothes. I'm going to move the torso. So what I want to do is select just what's um, on top. I'm going to go back to this torso in here and just twist it, but not too much. And I'll probably I'll move that leg back so it lines up with the hip. So probably do a little bit less actually. So let's go into this one and let's start and talk about twisting the torso. So let's mask off the bottom, just like that, maybe blur it a bit. And this is why we want to keep the resolution lower than what it is because it makes blurring a lot easier. Now let's go back, let's go into this one now and do the same thing. So let's just mask off the bits at the bottom. So all of the, if you had more pieces of the torso, this is why we've joined the belts and things together. If you had more pieces in this torso, it would start to get a bit tricky at this point. So that's why we want to join as many things together as we can in the posing stage, and then um, split them up later if need be so let's actually, I'll just go back to this one. So when we twist that, it's kind of at a bit of an angle. So let's move this up to the middle. Twist it, but also pull it a little bit and turn it around. But also, let's get rid of this shield now, just to have a look at where this is. Um, it doesn't really matter if the shield follows the hand, so we can add that back later. All right, so I'm going to leave that there. I know it's pulled this in a funny, these clothes in a funny direction, but it's just the shoulder line is important, and then we can twist the torso, sorry, the bottom later. I actually, I will to keep that back on, and I'll just mask up a bit higher, and a bit higher, because I'm going to come in and just do the shoulder, turn the shoulders a little bit further, and turn it down like that because I want this shield to swing across the front and the axe to go up in the sky. Um, I'll come back in and move those around later. And obviously that's because I've moved it with a different tool has pushed it to the side. But let's move this back because we want to be able to use, we still want the body to be intact and to look correct. So this muscle is going to be stretching up the pec. Um, kind of looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger is about to do some posing. Uh, there we go. So that's, that's still there. We could come and add any clothes to this later on. So I like to get the head in to 
position as early as possible. It just helps when I start to put in um, the arms to know where he's looking. There we go, that's looking all right now. Okay, let's, let's get this shield. Especially when we get to things like chain mail, where we, it's in a t-shirt, not separate limbs. Keeping the arms in the sort of as close to the T-pose, at least the upper arm, makes posing these t-shirt things a lot easier. Um, so, and this is kind of what, I've done this pose a couple of times, and this is kind of what it allows, but we don't really need that luckily for us. So let's blur this mask though, and I'm gonna swing this arm around. So let's find the, the middle of the elbow, just isolate isolate this and I will just probably just move the um, the chain mail sorry not the chain mail the um, grab the wrong one I'll move the shield with this as well so I'm going to turn on the multi um, append I think it's no, multi transpose or whatever it is and just select the arm and the shield and just swing it across at the elbow and then I'll twist it down a little bit but now I'm going to turn this off, actually, or, and I'm just going to select the hand. Sorry. Oh, no. Sorry, give me a second. All right. So, draw. There we go. Now, I've just grabbed this hand. No, I need to go to auto groups. There we go. It's really hidden. Turn this back open. All right. Because this hand was not sort of, um, I need the palm to be in line with the stitching. So, I'm just going to move the hand and the shield. They're not actually on top of each other. So that's, but that's all right, let's fix that now. Let's put that there, turn this off, move the shield. I'm not sure why this is out there. Up to the hand. And then we'll spin that around, spin that around. Let's bring it back to the arm a little bit, but we'll come in, clean that up later. But there we go. It's got the shield at the front. We might want to drop that elbow. That's sticking a bit weird to the side. But once we've got the canvas, then it'll be easier to move and pivot that. So I think I want this axe to be up ready to swing across the shield. But before I do that, I might just turn this shield a little bit further in like that. Um, so he's looking over it. All right, so let's start moving this arm. And so this is one of the reasons why we made the arms separate to the torso, especially for posing, is because if we wanted to twist this now, at least now the muscles will move with it, but if it was part of this, we'd get some weird twisting and deformed geometry in there. So that's not, well, luckily we don't have that to worry about. So I'm just gonna align the gizmo with the arm, turn on the multi-append, or multi-transpose. I'm gonna get that wrong for the rest of the day. And spin this up, and just turn it back in. And spin that back down. Now, because I obviously didn't have that right where the joint's got to be, I've got to move that back down to here. So that's not a natural pose whatsoever. So let's now swing that forward, put that to here. We're going to spin the hand in a second and this forearm to come further forward. So I want to auto group and just get rid of this hand now. And then we're going to mask off this part of the hand and do the same, th the same thing we've just done before and spin it to about here. So it looks sort of like almost ready to strike. Um, and now let's get rid of this. Grab that hand, select the hand, spin that this way, and just spin that a bit. Mm. Okay, I'm not sure about that pose. Hmm. The art looks a bit better. Um, obviously having reference material makes all of this easier if you've got some art to go off or, or if you know there's um, some miniatures that are, or a miniature range that's got some really w well sculpted models. There, it's always great to have those for reference. Um, I'm just doing this off the top of my head um, based on what I've already done. That way I can just show off the tricks. So let's go back and let's just start lifting this hip up We've already got this one dropped down. Um, maybe with this sh these shoulders, I've kind of got this left one pushed forward and the other one's back. The shoulder line isn't straight, but 
normally I might want to move that a bit further. The neck's twisted, the torso's twisted. It really looks like one of the. It's going to do an Arnold Schwarzenegger pose. Um, cool. So I think okay. So I think this body is fine. Not the hands, but the rest of the body. I'm going to start now to join them together. So I'm going to uh, merge all of these together. But there would be a case to be made for um, getting rid of these leg pieces first. But I'm not so worried about that. So I'm going to come in here now and dynamish these. Alright, and now I'll isolate this body. I'll just start to um, do some more of the folds in, in these wrists. Oh, actually, before we, while we do that, let's also grab the clothes and bring these pants down in here. There we go. Let's pose these now while we do um, the other things. So we're not going to join these to this mesh yet. We're going to save that for another step, just because we do want to be able to use this mesh down the line. Um, right. So now it's as simple as just stretch this kind of over the over the leg. And if you had done more more mu sort of muscles, now we've done this pose. So then we'd be able to use those. But I'm just going to do it that all in this one sort of step. So here we go. The pants are kind of stretched. Bring that forward. There we go. So that's now kind of sitting. And now it's kind of end. I've lost what if we had anything around the glutes, but I'm gonna add the skirt later on that I was talking about. So I won't worry about that. This one here is a little bit simpler because the legs are quite straight. Obviously, if we had a kneeling figure, there'd be a lot more sort of re-sculpting to do. But because we did all of those creases earlier, we kind of already know where to start. And now we just gotta wrap them around the hamstrings here. There we go, that looks as if we've just sculpted it um, where they are. But we, we can still come back and refine that a bit more. So in, in here, let's have a look. So we need that elbow high on. So firstly, this stitching on the wrist is on the wrong side. So let's take that and just spin that around this way. So now obviously that's kind of destroyed a bit of this sort of um, the arm that we had. That's all right. Um, it's not ideal, but it's what it is. But because we're just going to re-sculpt this arm to have a curved elbow. So I'm going to dynamage that. Um, start smoothing it, smoothing it. And we want to start making some of these folds. So let's get this really strong brush out and start taking away and sculpting up some sort of... Ooh, because maybe I might go to one of these for a change. So I'm still in the, the clay build up because it's a really strong, quick brush. Same with the flatten. It's just a lot stronger and a lot quicker to move things around than the standard brush. Um, cool, so let's just make this sort of crease in the elbow. Another crease here, uh, there. Put those together. All right, that's a bit better now. So okay, the, that looks all right. Those pants look really good when they're over that, over that now. So let's add the skirt, the skirt we've been talking about. Um, this is really common on all the these sort of um, uh, uh like uh, you, not uniforms, but the soldiers from sort of any Viking, Norman, that sort of 11th century um, British era, they've all, they all seem to have this sort of skirt under their chainmail. Um, and I think it's more just a long t-shirt, but for our purposes it's a skirt. And this is the same as sculpting the kilt. Um, I've just done a bunch of those for some Scottish Highlanders. So, that's, so this is just a spear that I've just inserted. Um, and Obviously, fabric doesn't stretch too much. Obviously, we're going. To, this would have some a lot of folds if it was hanging upright. So we just want to tuck that as tight as we can to this leg. 
and push that in. Oh, and then we're gonna have the canvas and go over it later. Let's bring that up. That doesn't. That looks a bit longer. So you you kind of just want it as in if you picture where it started up in the waist, an equal sort of distance on either side. Um, until we see remesh it, if we smooth too close to the end, we're going to lose a lot of that shape because the topology underneath is a bit trash. That's all right. Just make sure I'm recording. Yeah, that'd be a shame if I wasn't. Got a bit of a scare there. All right. Here we go. See remesh. All righty. So we'll come and do these folds once we've done the canvas. So I like to start from the bottom and work my way up with these models. Um, cool. So let's let's load in the torso, but we won't do anything with that yet because obviously that looks a bit messy at the moment. And if we've destroyed that or deformed it too much, we can come back and fix and use another one. But it, at least we've got the sleeves that we can sort of use. So let's get these two bits in. I know that this middle um, is going to be kind of the same as where these go. Um, like it's about the middle of this sort of waist where like the centers will be for these. So I can kind of already sort of infer that. So I'm just going to lift these up. I don't wouldn't use the masking to move these around. I would just do all of this with the move brush. Um, there we go. I wonder why that's a bit thin at the back. So we'll have to thicken that up in a, in a second. So now let's get these running. So it's a bit puffy. Let's tuck that in. So this is gonna we're gonna start seeing the geometry underneath from the other pieces, and we will get rid of that down in a second. All right. So this skirt is obviously much lighter than the padded wool. So I imagine the padded wool is going to be pushing it down. There we go. All right, but I think it's looking a little, almost a little long as if it's been stretched. So let's just make that a bit straighter. All right, and this is, this is okay here. And again, I'm going to tuck that in. So it's this one here where we were talking about how it's going to form over the knee um, earlier. And it's not going to sit like that. Um, if it was shorter, maybe it would, but it's it's at the side, the knee is pushed past, it's going to sit out of the way. So I kind of need to bring everything here. This is going to require a tiny bit of re-sculpting. So let's let's actually, so this is um, our canvas. Let's, so we have this, I was going to save this tool first. Um, uh, bid five just in case because I don't want to um, lose this now. So we've got this S bend, right? We want to flatten, that's the smooth. We want to flatten this mesh. So let's get it into the center. Um, kind of symmetrical. So yeah, this is the one we want where we bring the sides around and then we're going to stretch it. So let's actually let's make it a little bit bigger and so we're going to just gently tap to mask the top and S bend the other direction so it's straight. So we did, yes, we did make that bigger. So we're going to have to come back now and make that the same size as the other one. But this one is probably going to be sitting like kind of just straight down here because it's going to wrap around or like kind of over that sort of knee. There we go. All right. So let's bring that across. But this is kind of reflective of where it would sit and especially if that was something heavy like chain mail. All right. And then we just pull that in. Lift it up. There we go. That's kind of how it would sit. So that's, yes, that has sort of destroyed the lines we had from before. So we can, um, kind of use this tool to bring some of them back. But let's first now get rid of this skirt. I'm pretty happy with it where that belt's sitting at the moment. So I'm that's why I'm going off that line. I know we still haven't positioned the torso. Okay, so this one is clearly way longer now. So we need to make that shorter.
and as a result we need to pull this back because it's still a sort of a square also needs to be sort of a square all right let's start to ditch some of this material now because it's just going to get in the way all right cool but still going to pull that back because it needs to line up with this line here so that's just okay being there so again these are some of the creases we're going to need to re-sculpt in just a second all right let's ditch this shield this is getting in the way so i'm going to go um, weapons and i'm going to put the axe there as well because we don't need to worry about those all right so let's let's start fixing this gambeson let's actually ditch the head as well um, okay so we've kind of pulled it in funny directions let's fix that So at the back, pull that in. Um, we've also got quite a jacked torso underneath. So we're going to have to start to hide some of that down in a second. Oh, actually, this is the perfect place to start adding a lot of creasing in there, especially with that arm is pointed down. So I'm not going to worry about the gizmo for this one. I'm just going to be pulling it and to just in line with um, this one here. So let's bring that out because then we're going to join them together in the same way we're going to join um so if i get rid of base mesh put this in base mesh cool let's go order groups split hidden split hidden okay let's make this belt now one piece it was good to have them together while we were moving them around um, but just for the sake of this let's hide this now because now we're going to or at some point very soon we're going to bring this this up and put these together because we might move that belt and drop it and so we need these to kind of be fused together so let's put a bit of the base mesh back all right this one we're going to move with the gizmo though so just from up here spin it that way move it up yeah, i think i pictured that arm swinging up a little bit higher but that's that's still fine but because that shoulder has come forward we need, we need to swing this bit further around. That's what we're talking about with not having a straight shoulder line. Um, that just makes it look a little bit more dynamic. So, and again, that means this one needs to come a bit further around. Join these on. All right, so we'll stitch those together in a second. I just want to make sure that before we do that, that it's all kind of neat because the less re-sculpting we can do, the better. All right, so it might look a bit puffy, but I think, um, and when we wrap it around the belt, we'll make the, the belly sit a bit better. All right, so this is the side is fine. It's just a bit wide. Oh, okay, so under the skirt is a good opportunity to start um, talking about. At some point, let's get rid of the base. What we're gonna have to go do is go through and close all of the holes. This in there, all that all it does is just make this a weak spot. We're just going to bring the skirt out to meet it. Here, this one that we were talking about earlier, just making this thicker. And at a certain point, we may as well just bring all of this straight down. And then just, let's just move that in there. Because no one's, no one's looking under there for anything. And we're going to cover this in a cloak later on anyway. But... It's probably a result of doing um, physical miniatures, but every time there's, because it's always built up in layers, obviously they do the skirt first and then the um, stuff on top, that there's never gaps between them. And so that's all of the models, and that's probably to do with casting as well. But we, it's kind of still relevant for us with um, this because the printing, we don't want to have any gaps. And as part of that, we've got to close these off in a second. Mm -hmm. I might. Alrighty, and then let's bring that up. All right, so this is a good start for this um, posed figure. It has only taken half an hour. If we turn on the rest of it, though, um, and the shield, we've got to move the hands, fix that head, but that's kind of every angle we look at it, there's not like we're missing anything. It's not like anything's flat. 
every angle there's some sort of interesting thing that we can see. Alright, let's put that belt back now. And talk about tucking this in. In a, another video, or one of the next videos, obviously I've got chain mail to cover and um, other things, but we'll do some belt accessories. So things like bags and stuff like that, and then making those into insert meshes. Right, let's get this head somewhere. So that neck that we, that we made on that gambeson is pretty loose. So okay, let's find the gambeson. There it is. So the model, the head is fitting fine on the model. It's just the gambeson is too far forward. So let's go back to this Arnold Schwarzenegger. Let's bring that back instead. All right, now let's load the head up. There we go. That's a bit better. So I'm. If you were going to just have this head separate uh, without all the hair, um, you would skip this step and you would just make it a neat little um, hole in there. But I'm going to join the head. So I'm just going to come in here and fill these gaps. I'm going to grab the hair which is a separate polygon apparently. They just start pulling it up. Oh, because the helmet's something separate, that's right. And put those here. Okay, cool. All right, so that way the hair kind of sticks to the back of this. I'm gonna drop that back down. Why have we lost? Right, okay, because it's different poly groups. Yep, we haven't lost anything. Oh, what we haven't done is a strap for the helmet. That's just gonna be a simple cylinder. Um, but we'll get to that in just a sec. Okay, all right, so now let's see. All right, we need this neckline to come up. It needs a bit of a shirt in there. So let's come back to this torso we had. And let's just bring up just here, just some stuff to play with. Go back, push that in, and let's make some sort of a a shirt to go underneath because it, otherwise there's a lot of neck sort of exposed, which just is looking a bit funny. Um, that's a bit better as it is. I'm not quite sure whether I want that to be a t-shirt or what I want yet. Um, we're going to add the cloak in just a second actually. So. Uh, that's why I haven't worried so much about the back because I'm pretty adamant that it's going to be a cloak. Ooh, so, okay, we need to make these all match up. Just not have too much of a gap between them. We don't want to look like, or make it look like anything is particularly thick. It's the same thing down here. Just pad those out. Fill out the sleeves. Alright, so I'm really happy with the legs. They're kind of, they're kind of fine as they are. The skirt, we're going to add some creases in a second. We'll do this creases on the skirt around the same time we do the um, cloak. Okay, so this gamson we'll, might have a couple of creases we're going to add in a second. Might do some on this one. And then we have to do some under here. Let's do the cloak first. So let's turn off the shield. The weapons, we don't need that. But we'll leave the head on, so let's just turn these off. So to do cloaks, I like to do them with a plane first. You could, I used to do them with, a, with these cubes and then sculpt on them, but um, I ultimately decided that if I if I put, put in this plane, pivot it this way, I need to turn on double actually so we can see both sides. All the things I sculpt in here, I can just extract the whole thing and then I get an even size the whole way around. So. Obviously, we need this to sort of wrap around the torso. So I'm just going to mask off a bit at the top and give it some sort of a um, thing to go over the torso. And this is really rough. There we go. So you could do a generic sort of um, cape and then add that on. Um, later, in the same way we did the rest of the clothes, but 
it's kind of something that's really specific to how the model is sort of standing that you'll probably end up doing a couple of different types and then not reusing them so much as just editing them uh, as like as you need them because there's only so many like different ways a thing can fold and you can still manipulate, once you've done the details at the top, you can manipulate the bottom a bunch of times and it, it will look like it's part of the same series, but it won't necessarily look copied. But there's nothing wrong with copying um, a cape and then tweaking it a bit. It just makes sense. Okay, so we kind of made this wrap around. I'm going to take it wider over this shoulder. But before we do that, we want this geometry to work for us. So I've just kind of, with this um, curve, sort of made that into a bit of a circle. So I want to zero match this and to, um, to go lower. I want to go lower one more again. Just no, no, never mind. Because I kind of wanted um, a couple of rows around the neck, but maybe we'll get those later. So let's come here to move and let's pull this down. Sorry, this down this way. There we go. All right. Pull that. The outline is a little bit more important than what it looks like on the inside because we can smooth what's on the inside, we can't smooth this outline. Let's actually smooth that. And I know that's pulled one of the vertices in the wrong way, but then we'll just pull that one back and that will help us when we see a remesh. There we go. That's come quite wide. This one obviously won't go quite so high over the shoulder. Um, because it's being lifted up. Let's see what happens when we smooth this one. Okay, now that one's okay. Pull this one a bit tighter. Alright, we also we have to cut away the neck at some point, so let's let's do that now. Um, so let's divide it a little lower. Ooh, no, let's zero mesh. Divide. No, let's zero mesh with same, sorry. divide a few times. Okay, let's mask off this center. Now, if I deleted it, then we would have all of these sort of polygons that are um, like with all these sort of rough edges. So what I'm going to do is go masking, sorry, not masking, polygroups. Group masked. Now, there is a brush in here. If we go to light box, brush, come over here to smooth. We've got smooth groups so this is going to replace our shift brush for now and we're just going to smooth these groups and then quite simply come up here to split groups and then we can just get rid of that little circle in there so now because zero mesh is going to um oh hang on i might have made a mistake with that sorry no i haven't good Zero mesh is going to keep that sort of um, center. What we could have also done is turn on group split and had it um, remesh first. That might have been a bit neater actually. But either way, we've got our circle. It's cut away. Um, we're going to pull this down in a second. So let's get this back on. So before we start sculpting this, when, let's not worry about how it's going to join together first. Let's work out how it's going to sit over this. So we don't want any gap between this body here and this cape. Obviously, we're going to make it thicker down in, in a second. But first, let's lift it up this way. Let's do a, a big proper cape. Not, I've done some shorter ones in some of the models we've seen earlier. But I think this one, they all are fur. I'm not going to do a fur on this one. Um, if I do fur, it might be around the neck. But I won't do first straight away at least. Alright, so pull that in, because it's got to come down from the arm. Alright. Yeah, just tuck that back in a little bit. So let's see how much of a gap we've got between this cloak and the base. Sorry, the base and the model. It will join up. I normally support my models when they're 45 degrees back. So I do a lot of supports on the cape and the feet. And that kind of helps hold up the rest of the model. Um, so that normally works quite all right. 
So let's come in now, divide it twice more. Let's get out of the poly frame and let's start adding in some sharp lines down the back. So it's going to come over this way. I kind of want it to go there. This is a very finicky sort of step is adding these sort of details. So we've got to go around the neck, but we don't actually want to do around the neck just yet. We want to do the ones that are just the broad sort of strokes before we extra um, extrude it that way. These work in, these always work in the end, just like how the hair does, where they kind of find themselves as they go. All right. Okay, so that's very sort of generic. Um, let's just smooth that a little bit first. But we can see how that's going. We're going to add a whole bunch of details in a second. So, all right, let's extrude. Extrude all the polygons. About to there. This has got to hold its own weight. So, decently thick is not a problem. Let's do a quick, just a quick bit of smoothing. We could have actually taken that a fair bit thicker. I thought it was taking that a lot thicker, but either way, for now, that's fine. So let's just start straightening some of these edges. Now, we know the poly groups are all different from extruding it. Let's turn on keep groups and Z remesh. That way we're going to keep this sharp line around the edge. Obviously, when we smooth it ourselves, we're going to lose a bit of that. But for now, um, just when we remesh it, it won't. There we go. Now it's going to be a bit easier to smooth. But Hmm. We're not lose oh because we've got smooth groups turned on. We're not actually going to lose the thickness. Let's keep that because it's still going to smooth, but we're not going to lose the groups. So that's actually quite good. Um, we're going to use that later on when we do chain mail. All right, so let's just start to lift that up. This cape up over the neck, around, around here. And then we need to bring that sort of up. All right, so let's find this cloak and isolate that. Um, all right, so what we need is kind of to pull it, pull it in, pull it in, and then let's double and get this down standard with a strong subtract. Oh, it's not doing, not liking that. It's taking away on the wrong side. Sorry, that's my phone. Let's get rid of that. All right, so these are just going to be the creases to start the cloak. So I normally would do the front um, separately to the back. I don't think any more than two or three sort of folds um, is going to show up later on when we print this. It's, it's very small. A bit more division. So this is that's more than enough, and then we'll add more in in here. So now we come this way. Let's just get a bit around, like sort of not the hood, but if there was a hood, um, where that's going to be. Let's take this over this way. Let's create a new one in that way. Okay, that's going to link up with what we've got down there. Let's have this one swing, sorry, swing around. This one come down and join this. And this one run itself there, because then we'll um, have that start. So now we're going back in and adding some of these lines we had earlier. But now they're a little bit like more joined into what we had at the top. Go. And this is drawing at the moment. We're just trying to make like the shape and the curves. We'll go in and we'll sculpt this properly in a sec in a second. All right. 
smooth that a little bit um, and remesh that half just to get rid of some of those um, it's, the Z remesh just helps smooth and uh, of course makes the polygons run along some of those sharp lines we had that's going to make smoothing it easier and sculpting it a bit easier and now we'll add some a little bit of um, texture to the robe with um, the folds We'll do the same sort of shoelace that we did around the leg wraps on the front as if it's just been they've been tied together. We'll do that in a second. It will still be the exact same process as we did on the legs. I need time now. There we go. Cool. Let's move that back out. Oh, I actually lost a bit of detail there, so I'm just going to smooth more of this, the bottom than the top to save some of that. Alright, so we've done the drawing with the, um, the damn sand, and now let's go in with actually the clay build up. I've still got this brush. Let's drop this intensity. You can use the standard for this, but this one. Um, oh, actually, I kind of like what, what that was there. It's just a bit stronger. So at the bottom, we'll come in with the move tool and um, start like to bring some of these folds out a bit further. I kind of want to have a little fold that goes this whole way there and there. So again, I haven't got a, a tablet, so lots of little strokes to build up the shape. If there was a tablet, obviously there's the pressure sensitivity, but I haven't got one of those yet. This line. Um, one comment with, with sort of these sort of capes is it's kind of sp specific on sort of the style of model. So there are some miniatures that have like, you know, capes with really straight lines and there's no folds in it. Others show things just like the wind blowing through them, through them as well as the folds. So like um, they've got a lot more sort of lines running across and stuff like that. Um, it's it's kind of yeah specific on sort of what style of um, sculpting you're doing. It's people talk about, and this is probably worth a discussion by itself. Things like true scale and whatnot, and so true scale is meant to be like the non-heroic proportions, sorry proportions. So the heads that you know match the body better, but they still don't. They're still very exaggerated, and um, but for generally for historical models. We don't do those sort of capes that are um, like perfectly idealized. They are a lot more sort of um, wrinkles in them and things like that because that's just the way fabric really sits. But for fantasy, um, then it could, like doing a cake would be as simple as just doing straight lines across. But but not for all fantasies. That's just. It's just not for a historical thing. Um, that's. I'm going to smooth that down. That's just given us a lot of sort of definition. I might go in now though and just start adding some 
strong real sort of lines to this because I think it's we're almost done. There we go. I think there's a, sort of a lot of dimension to some of these folds. It's not probably not the best scape ever, but we will come in and fix this in a second. But with the rest of the model, it's going to look fine. The more work you spend on making this shape, um, the, obviously the better it's going to look. But you can take this cape though and mirror it and use it on another model, and then and repose it, like repurpose it later. So uh, one of the other things that's going to give them a lot of sort of shape is things like pulling, maybe with AccuCurve instead, like bits like out here like that. Um, that's kind of the way they really sit is is a bit more um, crooked when come in here. Yeah, it's like that. There we go. That's now flowing a little bit more sort of naturally, um, but it's still clearly wrapped around the neck. But I have lost a bit of the thickness, unfortunately that I had from extracting it. So that's just as simple as back face masking and pulling it. Um, smoothing groups is still on, so we won't lose any of those sharp lines. I'm going to have to come in and dynamesh this because there's some overlapping topology. But what we want to do now, especially here, is just pull into the model. So we've obviously got this sort of indent in here. That's not so much of a problem, but we just need it to line up or to start to touch this model here. So let's go in and just bring the two together. And we'll do this more once we've merged the rest of the model. And sometimes you can do it all the way down onto the foot. It doesn't really matter how thick it is at the bottom. We don't see, it, see that. And it makes supporting it a whole lot easier when it's all in one piece. Okay, now let's do these folds here. Uh, just after this autosave. So first things first, I've got to ditch this shield. It keeps getting in the way. Let's turn that up and just start to do some sort of folds in there. Um, this just needs to just be not be flat. Nothing else in this model is flat, but yeah, it's not not terribly much to add to this one. You could go around the, the bottom and add some nice trim, but I'm not going to worry. That's the only shield. It's got to be deafening. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Now it's in its own folder. It won't show up, but I still need it to keep the head around. There we go. That's a bit better. So that's going to be a little bit more interesting to paint than if it was just flat. So, all right, this belt buckle. Now, yeah, normally I do these at the end with my insert curve brush, but all we need to do is just kind of pull it back to be in line and it's already we've already made it thick enough that it's joined with the rest of the, the mesh so that's kind of fine now let's come in here let's bring that back out let's add some extra folds in this oh we've got the hand in the way so let's start to add some in there and then add There we go. All right, then let's just do some, let's drop that entirely. And just do some light sort of lines going up this way. It's gonna distort the buckles a little bit, but not not too much. And here as well. Yeah. Just to sort of give the impression that the fabric sort of stretched over this. Let's bring that back. We kind of need to pull those back. Yeah, we kind of ruined a bit of the gamers in here. Um, that's all right because we're going to come in and redo that where needed, as well as we're going to still have chain mail to add. But if we wanted to stop now and print this, this is still going to still going to be fine. So I'll cover chain mail down the line. So we, what we've got um, left to do is the belt accessories. So the belt accessories, things like the scabbard and whatnot, we need to do. We need to do chainmail. But 
if we want to export this now, once we fix these hands, let's, let me just fix these hands, and then we'll then we'll export this and get this ready. So I just want to scale that right up. But there, let's just bring those sort of put that base with the shield. Sorry, I was going to talk about the exporting, but just remember we haven't touched these hands. Alright, so that hand is ready to hold the shield. This one here with the axe. Again, I can't get scale that up by about 1.2 something. Let's move that with the axe just into position. Let's move that down. Let's move that hand up a bit as if it's wrapping the axe a bit better. There we go. All right, so that's tucked in a bit better. Ooh, let's pull that finger forward. All right, so there's this is the miniature that we would print now. Um, so if we wanted to stop here, and of course we're going to keep going, this is all going to get printed in one piece. So we would come down here to Merge Visible. It's going to take all of these things and put them in its own tool. So first things first, Let's save this. Save as um, finished bearded five. All right, cool. And we've got this model here. So this is now we've got all our things. It's all posed. We would do. This is where we would start to optimize things for three D printing and sculpt any sort of last details, fill the holes, stuff like that. Ooh, what we haven't done is a little um, sort of something to tie around there. But we could just do a buckle. So if I just go, we'll just do a quick buckle instead of a um, something to tie around. We'll do, we'll do that in the next video or just do the shoelace that we've done before. But instead what we're going to do is just do this, W, let's drop it there. There we go. We've just got a little buckle instead and just paint that gold or silver. There you go, problem solved. It's a bit big. Here, a bit taller, put it back. Done. Okay, so this is um, this is all right. So we've come in here now, and I would dynamesh these all together. I don't like to boolean things together. Um, dynamesh fixes if we've got any problems in the topology. Obviously, we need to close holes later on. But if we were to use the boolean where we've got things overlapped, it just sometimes can get a bit messy. So we've just got to wait for this to happen. So what this has done is merge absolutely all of this together. So first things first, when I 3D print this, I'm going to um, rotate this back 25 degrees and then go 20 degrees that way. At least um, I've still got, I can still return this to its normal position um, by pressing this button, but just as we start to optimize this for printing, I've got to get rid of things like these overhangs here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's going to mean back face masking sort of down like that. No, I don't want to do that. We just we just need a bit more. Sort of like that angle is going to be fine. This piece is going to be so small that that's not going to fail. But We've got to get. We've got to start finding things. Oh, hang on. We've still got smooth groups on. So let's just find our normal smooth brush. There we go. Because all of these things are still in their separate poly groups, which is fine for now. So let's just start smoothing some of this out. All right. In there, that is all stuff that isn't going to matter. Let's get rid of that. Let's bring all of that in. So, dynamesh that. And we'll just close these holes. This is going to be hidden by the shield as well as the arm. So all of that is just extra stuff that's going to need to get supported by itself. That's just asking for a headache. There we go. Let's do that. Let's... There we go. Sort of problem solved here. But like we said earlier, one of the good things with using things like cylinders and stuff like that um, 
is they're already closed shapes. We don't need to worry about anything in there. We know all of those shapes are already closed. Um, up in here though, we've got to close these gaps. Alright, so this cape I think is wrapped around pretty well. I'm going to leave that in there because we can still support that. What have we got here? We've got, that's the gamut in there. And where can we see that? Is that, that's all squashed on this side except for a little bit. Let's pull this a little bit further forward. That way and that way. Combine those and let's get in there and start smoothing. So, when you're doing this, sometimes it's like it's tricky to reach into a small area. We have this control shift where we can just isolate what we can see and it just helps us get into these little areas where we know we're just going to do something like that. There we go. sort of thing in there. So it's not that. Alright, that under there is going to be fine to support, no problems. The computer's really struggling <laughs> with the recording. Alright. The bottom, let's smooth that out. Okay. Any last details this is where we add them now. So just make sure that's all running down. The belt buckle's running down. The beard, I guess the supporting under this beard is going to be a thing. So what we can just do is just pull it like that. It, that's not going to take away from the model or anything. That's... There we go. That's just going to sort of do a bit of supporting by itself. While we're here, though, is that whole a problem? Not really. There we go. So that hasn't destroyed the model or made it look um, silly in any way, because that, like that, that's sort of thing you'd find on on a plastic mini anyway. But it just makes the beard look a bit thicker, and we can pull pull it further back out if we want. The hair. Let's close this gap in here. And one of the last things we're going to do is just have any last little lines and creases now that the whole thing is put together. So just in here, probably with this one now, just add a little bit of extra stuff in there. Obviously we're going to have a shield in front of this, so it's not the most important. But just with this hair where we've sort of smoothed it, let's add some more back. Alrighty, there we go. Same thing here. Alright, so to get this ready for 3D printing, um, assuming we're ready, I'd still spend another 20 minutes or so polishing this up. But if we were ready to call this quits as it is and want to get this to the printer, what we would do is um, come up here to Decimation Master in a second. So that's just there. Firstly, let's just, just do double check. So select the middle. Turn on double, make sure we haven't got any geometry sort of on the inside. So this is what we're looking for, stuff like that. So we're just going to get rid of that by going back face mask that way. Select back to normal, drag. Probably would have fixed that problem just there and then. Because that's just somewhere in there. Let's select that again. Alright, that looks to be fixed. So this is the like the inside. We can't see any holes, so that's fine. So come up to Dec Decimation Master. Um, if you're using doing something that's 25 millimeters, sorry, 28 millimeters sort of thing, um, using the scene that I started you off with, which is already set up with the right scale, then, and you got a resolution of over a thousand, 
decimating it by like 10%, 15% is fine. Let's do 10%. And pre-process current. All right, cool, that's done. I've just skipped ahead because that took a minute and 30 seconds. So then we need to come up to decimate current. So this is actually going to decimate it. So if we zoom in now, that geometry is a lot faster than what it was. That was a lot denser beforehand. So this is now ready to export for 3D printing, but let's just take the opportunity now, while it's a low poly gamut, just to smooth some of these things we we're ignoring earlier and again here but I'm not going to export this because we're still going we still have more to sculpt but this is a quick the if you were, if you were finished now this is how you would export it um, obviously we need to actually sorry reorientate that model um, last thing before you export it up to um, C plugin 3d print hub update size ratios so this is just going to give you the correct size so the model is standing 37 millimeters tall. The height is this middle one at the moment, just because ZBrush has the X and Y axis different to 3D um, Blender and normal sl slices. So this is updated the correct size. So just, that, all that's telling us is it's seven millimeters from here to the top, because we know that it's about 30 millimeters. So yeah, this is ready for 3D printing now. All right, so in this next in the next video, we're gonna go across probably to Blender for a bit and do the chain mail. That's going to be a long video on um, nano meshes. So this is just a bit of a teaser of what we're going to do in the next series or one of the next episodes is make these bits of chain mail. So this chain mail, when we move it around, the links move with it. Obviously they stretch a bit far, but for things like sleeves, this is so much faster. To pose, we pose it in the same sort of way we, we do a normal model. Um, so if I say to this shirt over to here we go. Insert chain. Here, let me just rotate that up. Put that sort of in there. Let's scale it up a little bit. And I would come in and just kind of drag that to where it's got to be on the model. Um, and that's how we're going to get chain mail. But this is not an easy thing to make. It took me a lot of different attempts to um, get it set up. But yeah, this is this is how it's going to work when we get to that point. And I think that I think chain mail looks a lot more interesting than um, the Gamerson. And we'll do sort of a, a quarter length sort of chainmail shirt. But once you've done the basic sort of chainmail asset, then you can make it full sleeve length by just expanding it. But this is done with nano meshes. This is something that we can't do in Blender. So yeah, hang on, just putting the shirt on. Um, yeah, all right. Just very quickly, that's how we would put on a chainmail shirt. And all the links interconnect with each other. Um, that's all done here in the nano mesh, but we'll cover that more in another video. All right, so I'll leave it there. Um, I'll see you in the next one.